Uh, fellow citizens, uh, my name is Abraham Awolic, a member of the People's Coalition for Civil Action, the PCCA, at the voice of the people of South Sudan. Uh, today is the 25th of February, uh, 2023. And uh, I'm releasing this audio message as an official uh, statement of the People's Coalition for Civil Action uh, to comment on two major events that took place uh, in the recent weeks in South Sudan. The first of this is the, uh, is the pilgrimage of peace, the ecumenical pilgrimage of peace that was led by uh, Pope Francis of the Catholic Church um, the Most Reverend uh, Dr. Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Right Reverend Dr. Ian uh, Greenshields of the uh, Presbyterian Church, uh, who paid their visit recently. So we are we want to make a comment on that. And the second event is the extension of the revitalized transitional government of national unity. Uh, and the instruments of uh, the instruments that it uses, uh, which is the revitalized agreement on the resolution of conflict in South Sudan. Uh, these events are extremely important for the future of South Sudan and the PPCA, uh, which is the voice of the people of South Sudan, is here to make a comment. First, on the visit of the communal visit of Pope Francis, uh, Dr. Welby and Dr. Greenshields, uh, what an extraordinary uh, spiritual awakening that has taken place in South Sudan. The three leaders uh, demonstrated clearly um, in their work the care and the, um, the love and the mission of Christ. Uh, when Christ was on earth, his place was among the lowly regarded people. His place was with the oppressed. His place was with the sinners. His place was with those who were in need. And, uh, and so, uh, what uh, the ecumenical pilgrimage of peace demonstrated is that Pope Francis, the leader of the Catholic world and the Christian world, and Dr. Welby, leader of the Anglican and uh, the, the Christian world, and Dr. Uh, Greenshields, what they demonstrated is that they want to be with the lowly regarded people of South Sudan who have suffered in their lives, who are being oppressed by their own government, who are being staffed by their own government, who are being displaced, being killed, being left desolate and destitute, being in camp in their own country seeking protection from the UN. They had to go there and say, we love you and we care for you. And the world has listened to your cry and your suffering. And they did that in the most amazing way. Number two, it was clear what the purpose of the visit of Pope Francis was with his uh, brothers in Christ. They, they came uh, to communicate a very clear message to the leaders of South Sudan that the suffering that the people have uh, undergone over the last 10 years can no longer be tolerated. And they basically delivered a very clear message that the suffering obviously is caused by South Sudan's own leaders. And to stop it, 
the leaders must stop it. Since they created it, they have the capacity to stop it. This message was delivered clearly. And uh, and a lot of it will be found in our own statement, which has been issued uh, explaining this. The second part of the mission was to tell the people of South Sudan and their leaders where the problem is. And the church leaders clearly stated that uh, the, the problem is a leadership issue. The people of South Sudan have been neglected. The leaders have not done what they are supposed to do with the people that they are entrusted to help and to build and to develop and to unite. They fail to lead them. They fail to unite them. They fail to feed them. They fail to give them a sense of purpose. And they appealed to the people of South Sudan that the bloodshed has to stop. And the bloodshed can only stop if the leaders stop uh, causing the suffering. They also delivered a very clear message that uh, your country cannot become a cemetery. It should be a place where people flourish and grow and prosper. And that the wealth of the country should not be used for a few. Uh, the PCCA definitely identify with that message. And we, 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 great, we are so grateful uh, to the church leaders. They did not whitewatch. They did not care to be diplomatic. They told the message as it is. And so uh, we are, we, we applaud them. We applaud the church leaders. And we are overjoyed. And we are grateful that at last somebody in the, in the world is listening to our voices. And when the PCCA came out to say this, and when the people at the National Dialogue came out to say this, they were condemned. They were threatened. But now the truth is out. The crisis in South Sudan is a making of South Sudanese leaders. And those of us who are hiding behind our ethnic uh, solidarity, our security is not going to come through ethnic solidarity. That actually is the opposite. We will threaten each other. The moment we all go back to our ethnic basis and we consider the other group as the problem, uh, the country will continue to spiral out of control. Our security lies in us coming together. Coming together as one people, as we did in our referendum. Imagine if, if only the Dinkas voted for the referendum. South Sudan would not have become independent. Imagine if the, only the Noyas voted for a referendum. Imagine if only the Letukas or the Sholok or the Bari, if they voted for a referendum or the, or the, or the, the, the Zandes. South Sudan would not have become an independent country. The independence of South Sudan came as a result of 98.83% of us from all tribes coming together to deliver a future that we collectively determine. That is where peace is. That's where stability is. That's where prosperity is. Divided this country will fall and it is falling. We must come together. And that was the message that the church leaders delivered. And we applaud the church leaders and we affirm their message. It is a true message. The other message that the church leaders delivered is on corruption. And I want to quote uh, Pope Francis on this. And I quote, to prevent a river from flooding its beds has to be kept clean 
leaving behind the metaphor that the cleaning needed by the flow of life in society is represented by the battle against corruption the inequitable distribution of funds secret schemes to get rich patronage deals lack of transparency all of these pollute the riverbed of human society they divert resources from the very things most needed this was a message of pope francis to our leaders that what breeds all this uh injustice in the country is corruption and the scheme that one group wants to uh put itself in advantage at the expense of others is not going to take us anywhere we must recognize that um we are each other's keeper we must hold it as a hand pull each other forward or we all fall together there is no advantage the moment you create an advantage for yourself and your group you create a uh, equal rep- uh, resentment hatred and this instability for for all of us so peace can only be found in the unity of people unity of purpose and so this was a message that the church leaders uh delivered and we entirely support it now uh on the extension and before i go to the extension the last message the church leaders delivered was the youth i w- they spoke about a lot of things but there was one particular message to the youth of south sudan and here it is the leaders of the church told the young people and i want to quote the holy father that and i quote here in the passage from the barbarity of confrontation to a culture of vital encounter young people have a decisive role to play consequently they should be provided with open spaces of encounter for meeting and discussion open civic and political space that's what it is quote continue may they fearlessly take hold of the future which is theirs and so the clear message here to the young people in south sudan is that the future is theirs and i also want to quote hajj bishop of canterbury dr justin welby he said and i quote young people you are the majority of south sudan you are not just the future you are the present if we value you we will listen to your hopes for peace and opportunity and we all allow those hopes to shape the priorities of our nation and the church end of the quote so essentially the two leaders are saying the future of south sudan lie in the youth and so if the leaders of south sudan do not change their way then the young people should fearlessly take hold of the future which is this and this is where pcca comes in we strongly believe that the future of south sudan lies in ordinary people coming together and calling the bluff and telling the leaders that enough is enough we cannot take it anymore we have to move forward you are wasting our future and the future for which you fought those who liberated south sudan for that so that this generation these young people could have a better future than those who liberated the country this is the case of having the cake and eat it at the same time and so the time has come for the leaders of south sudan to make space for the youth and if they don't listen the youth should take over and they should take over by creating uh non-violent actions that will communicate to the leaders of south sudan that enough is enough war is enough 
Violence is enough. But we will talk. We will not be silence. So this is the message that I have. Uh, the PCCA has appreciated from the church leaders. Now on the on the extension of the revitalized uh, transitional government of national unity, as well as the instruments of oppression, the instrument of usurpation of power, which is the revitalized agreement on the resolution of conflict in South Sudan. This extension has clearly demonstrated and exonerated our position as a PCCA. We have said that this agreement has failed. It has failed to deliver on its core mission, which is to stop the violence. Yes, the political violence has stopped. Dr. Yegmechar and President Kir and everyone else are having good time in Juba, but war has not stopped in the rural uh, part of South Sudan, which is where 80% of our population live. Is there peace in the Sholo Kingdom? Absolutely not. Is there peace in the Madi Corridor? Absolutely not. Is there peace in Kajukeji? Um, is there peace in Ye? Is there peace in Lanya? Is there peace in Jongle, in Pibor? Is there peace in, uh, in Law Nuer? Is there peace in Bor? Is there peace in Abia? Is there peace in Twitch? Is there peace in Unity State? Is there peace in Apanar? Is there peace in Warap? Is there peace in Lake State? Is there peace in in, in Western Barbazal and no and and and, uh, and Western Equatoria? Is there peace in Eastern Equatoria? Of course, the answer is no. Uh, there is instability everywhere, and so. The bottom line is there is no justification whatsoever for the extension of the revitalized transitional government of national unity. First of all, it has failed in its very name, national unity. Where is the unity? Neither is there unity among the politicians nor unity among the ordinary people of South Sudan. So which unity are they talking about? Secondly, it has failed to deliver on its other important name, peace. The revitalized agreement on the resolution of conflict in South Sudan. They call it a peace agreement, resolution of conflict. Which conflict is being resolved here? Which conflict has been resolved? Of course, the conflict of the power, those who are in power but not our conflict as ordinary people of South Sudan. And so when they are together in power and everybody is getting their share, there is no conflict in South Sudan. Yet the rest of us are dying on daily basis, being killed everywhere. For them, that is peace. As long as there is peace in J1, there is peace in South Sudan. Well, that is not the country that we fought for. That's not the country that we voted for in the referendum. We voted for a country where peace would be in a Kobo, where peace would be in a unity state, where peace would be in Maban, peace would be in Nasser, peace should be in Kajukeji, peace should be in Numile, peace should be in Mongala, peace should be in Bor and in Pivor. And peace should be in, in Twitch and, and Abia. That is the country that we were talking about. Not a country that live only in the capital city and the rest of the place is considered not part of. That is exactly what we fought against uh, with the Khartoum government. It is the idea that the central government become a means to an end itself. That Juba becomes the the end to the aspiration of people of South Sudan that once you are in Juba in power that's the end of the story absolutely not it should not be the end of the story the end of the story is that every child born in South Sudan must have access to health care must have access to education must have access to nutritious food must have access to to security 
must have access to freedom. This is, this is what we fought for. And that our leaders are people that we entrust with our own power. And that we should have a right to remove them when we think that they are no longer serving our interests. This is the South Sudan that we, fight, we are fighting for. And that our leaders are not going to bank on ethnic animosity as the mechanism through which they, con they, they maintain power. This is, this is actually the wrong formula. This is what divided the Sudan. The real formula is that we must make South Sudan a country in which everybody feel that they have something to lose if they pick up guns to fight. We must give them things to lose. As long as they have nothing to lose, we have the country to lose. That's what they will do. They will burn the country. So we must give them something to lose. And what? And the only thing that they can lose is their freedom, is their power, is their jobs, is their good life, is their health. And so when you give people things to lose, their life is, more, is worth more, is dignified. They will want to maintain that. They will not wreck it. But if they have nothing to lose, they have no freedom. They have no food, they have no education, they have no health care, they have no wealth, they are poor. Of course, they have every reason to destroy anything. And this is the situation that we are facing right now. And so the way to fix this is not for a few thieves of power to sit in Juba and arrogate power to themselves and extend and give themselves more time in office. The only way to fix this is to call everyone to the table, call all the tribes to the table, all the political groups to the table, all the religious organizations to the table, the civil society, and let us chart a common way forward. And South Sudan National Dialogue has done half of the job. They, they have diagnosed what the problem is and they have prescribed a reasonable solution we can be revisited to make sure that they are more inclusive. So therefore, there is a need for the roundtable conference. Roundtable conference to address these matters and to make a new political agreement that will give birth to a new political dispensation. Extension of the RT GONU and the RRCs with the exclusion of others is simply a, a recipe for continued instability in the country and for continued dishonesty of politics in South Sudan. A politic that is rooted in ethnic uh, divisions, in economic uh, marginalization, in the collapse of systems and institutions. This is not the way to go. Yes, you feel good, you are in power, but the whole country collapsing around you. To what end is power? Why do you want to have power that is consuming and killing people around you? Why do you want to surround yourself with the skulls of young people, women, men, elderly people? Why? What is gracious about that? When there is an, another route, a more dignified and glorified route to bring poor people together and to retire in peace and to give the next generation the opportunity to chart a new course. This is what Pope said. This is what the Archbishop of Canterbury said. This is what the moderator of the Presbyterian said. And we agree with them. Entirely. And so, in conclusion, fellow citizens, the mission to fix South Sudan must start with each and every one of us. We have deferred our future. We have put the future of our children in the hands of men whose primary concern is to stay in power at the cost of you dying all. 
And you know what? Our silence, our complacency, our support gives them the reason to continue to oppress us. I have taken a choice. I made a choice. We in the PCC have made a choice. To face this oppressive, monstrous um, system that has divided our people, that survives on the chaos and the blood of the innocent, we have made a choice to confront it. What about you? What about you? Are you going to continue to hide behind being a dinka? As the only reason you support a monster system? Are you going to hide behind being a noir? As the only way you continue to support this monster system? Are you going to hide behind being a Zande and that a Zande is in power? in order to continue to support this monster system that is killing all of us. The time has come for us to revisit this. The time for us has come to stand, take a stand and be counted. As the people who at a time when the calling came, we rose and we brought our country back. A country that is slowly being dragged into uh, an abyss by men who have gone rogue. Even in the village, a normal dog would go crazy and became wild. And in the end, uh, to prevent it from uh, uh, biting and killing people, it has to be ended. It has to be killed. The dog has to be killed or the dog has to be chased away. So that it doesn't, it, it is no longer a normal dog. This is the same situation we are facing. We had leaders who liberated us, some of them, and they led us well, and we appreciate them for their service, but they have gone wild. They are no longer the same men that we respected, that we looked up to, that raised our flag. They have become uh, monsters. And so the time has come to challenge them. And so I want to conclude by saying that the most important thing that I took away from the visit of Pope Francis is his message to the church leaders that they cannot be neutral in the face of injustice. How correct that statement was. The church leaders in South Sudan have been complacent in the corruption, in the fighting, in the division. This is not all of them. There are some of them who have stood up for the truth, but many of them have gone along with the oppressive system. They have become fearful and they have uh, let down Jesus, who came to this world with the sole mission of challenging the status quo, of challenging the authoritarian system that was established to oppress people. And his mission was to establish a new kingdom, a kingdom of peace, of love, of unity, of faith. And Jesus has succeeded. And he did that by standing up to the authorities, including the chief priests, so are the leaders of South Sudan church going to join the people of South Sudan in their fight against injustice? Or are they going to continue to remain silent? This is the defining moment now for the church. And if it is to remain the most important institution in the lives of ordinary people of South Sudan, which it is, the time has come for it to face head on the corruption, the oppressive system of government that has been established, the authoritarian system to which the people of South Sudan did not sign up for. 
it was the call of the church to let my people go that brought uh, the the independence of south sudan and the time has come now for the church to do the same uh, this is the pcc message today and we thank you very much for listening to us and the people of south sudan should now be hopeful that the end is near and the future the bright future the sun rise the sun is rising and it is rising bright but that brightness must be held up with our own hands we must lit our uh, candles uh, to bring that brightness to the future of the country that we all deserve thank you very much